This morning, we are learning alarming new information about this barge and its contents that became grounded off our coast back in April. Now, the barge is called Bridgeport and was carrying coal ash from Puerto Rico when it beached near the Mayport jetties. It's about a mile south, in fact, of the mouth of the St. John's River. In fact, you can see it if you stand along the shore in Atlantic Beach. Now, since then, efforts to remove 12,000 tons of the ash have been stalled because of weather and marine conditions. This is actually from video that we shot uh, back in May at the end of May to give you some perspective about the weather conditions. Now, joining us via Zoom this morning is WJCT reporter Sydney Bowles, who, who's uncovered startling information about the coal ash that's on board. Good morning, Sydney. Thanks for being with us. Great to be here. Now, I want to give a little background. A reporter from Puerto Rico actually reached out to WJCT to raise a red flag about this barge and the company that creates this coal ash in Puerto Rico. What did he tell you and why is he so worried? So since 2015, uh, La Perla del Sur, his newspaper, has been tracking the company that produces this ash and the ash itself. And as he's documented health and environmental impacts from this material, he's been met with um, advertising campaigns from this coal company saying, this stuff in here is just like what's in your vitamins, pollution, or yeah, it's just sort of this weird sort of um, information campaign. So he wanted us here in Florida to be sure that we knew what we were dealing with now that we've got this situation off of our shore. And let's talk a little bit about coal ash, okay? So this contains arsenic, lead, boron, and lithium. Uh, from what we are hearing, from what we have heard from a local marine scientist as well. You had mentioned that this reporter gave you some background about other communities that have been see seeing severe impact as a result of ash that we know is inside this barge that has had previously been dumped. Was it off the coast of Bra Brazil? Can you tell us about that? Puerto Rico, yeah. So, um, I want to be really clear that the quantities that we're dealing with is a totally different magnitude than what happened in, in Puerto Rico, or excuse me, in the Dominican Republic. So we don't need to sort of be this alarmed. But because of millions of tons of coal ash dumped off the coast of the Dominican Republic, Omar Alfonso in Puerto Rico was able to document uh, birth defects, miscarriages, and, and even some instances of unusual cancers as a result of this being in the environment. Again, we're not dealing with that level of a catastrophe, but it is the kind of thing that high levels of this stuff has been shown to produce. Now, the EPA does not consider this, though, to be hazardous waste for full disclosure, right? So it, given that, I, I know I talked yesterday with Dr. Quentin White, uh, who's a marine biologist from, uh, from JU, and you've spoken with him as well. He is, though, however, very concerned about if any of this has leaked into the water. Yeah, yeah. So we actually, we can talk about how much of this stuff has has leaked, and it seems like a significant amount has, about 8,000 tons. Um, but what Quentin White has said to me is that coal ash is hazardous, and it's a waste product, but according to the EPA's regulatory scheme, it's not a hazardous waste, which means that in some instances, the, you know, the, the level of these toxic materials in the waste matter is within sort of the level of, of legal drinking limits. Other times it's not. Um, it, it's just not regulated at a high enough level to qualify as a hazardous waste, even though Quentin White and others have told me that it is still a dangerous substance. Mm, so it's interesting because it is very close, obviously, to our coast and people are going in the water. So you wrote in your article, we know that there were 12,000 tons, right, on this barge. And, and we know personally, because we, we've talked to DEP and, and along the coast and officials out there, that about 4,000 was removed. They brought in a crane and they removed it, but then the weather got bad and they had to stop. So, but you wrote in your article that 8,000 tons is unaccountable accounted for. I mean, does that mean that all of that leaked into the ocean? I'm still looking for absolutely rock solid, 100% proof of that in my reporting process. What I can say now is that, yes, we have written evidence that about 4,000 tons of this material was recovered by via ocean barge. We know the ship was carrying 12,000 tons of this stuff. Therefore, we can surmise that 8,000 tons is either unaccounted for, meaning it's still on the ship, or it's leaked into the ocean. Because of images that we've seen of the ship, it seems safe to assume that a significant amount of it has leaked. 
I still want to uh, hedge my language a little bit because I'm still looking for absolute confirmation from the authorities on this one. Yeah, and, and so it's interesting, too, because uh, we, we are working, by the way, to get Dr. White on the morning show uh, next week. We're working on that for Tuesday. Uh, but he mentioned to me and, and you as well that DEP is, is, has ordered samples of the sand around the area and that that report should be back this week or next week. So we'll continue to follow it. Uh, Sydney, thanks for your reporting on this. I really appreciate the background on this for our viewers. We're getting calls into our newsroom after your article was published last week from people asking us, hey, what's going on? You know, is there more coverage of this? more information because people along particularly who live along our coast are very worried Sydney thank you we appreciate thank it you. and we'll continue to follow your reports and we will continue to follow this here on channel 4 as well and bring you much more as we learn more